Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Facebook Live and our podcast. And today we're going to be talking about five reasons why most mortgage pros hate realtors and how to fix it. You know, it seems to me, and I've been doing this for 16 years, so correct me if I'm wrong, but my experience in working with and coaching mortgage pros to success for 16 years is that working with realtors is felt and seen and held as a necessary evil. And if they could avoid it, they will, right? It's like, okay, it's a have to, it's not a get to, it's something I have to do. And if they can avoid that have to, by all means, that's like mortgage utopia, right? To be able to build your business without having to talk to realtors, work with realtors, engage with realtors. That's most mortgage professionals utopia. That's like, you know, going to he going to heaven without the inconvenience of dying. You know, it's just like the absolute dream picture for most mortgage, mortgage pros is just never having to deal with them. But frankly, if you don't like working with realtors, it's kind of like someone who doesn't like sex. It probably means you're doing it wrong because Frankly, realtors can be an absolute joy to work with if you're working with the right ones and you have the right rules of engagement. Realtors can be battery chargers versus battery drainers if you're showing up the right way and if you're attracting the right partners. Realtors can be exceedingly profitable and the most profitable source of business in your business if you are doing it the right way. And again, if you're working with the right partners. So if you don't like working with realtors, it probably just means you're doing it wrong. It probably means that you have something out of joint, something out of whack that has you having your battery drained and having you feel the aggravation, the frustration, the annoyance that comes with doing it wrong. Because all of those aggravations and frustrations are symptoms of the fact that you're doing it the wrong way, the hard way. And that is precisely why mortgage professionals come to us and hire us so they can get that fixed because they realize these top producing agents have the capacity to send them the most amount of business most often than any other referral source bar none. Financial planners are great, but they can't compete. CPAs are great, but they can't compete. Having other sources, whether it be you know, your BNI, whether it be networking events, whether it be happy clients, those are all great and we'll take the, that business too. But that pales in comparison to the referral generation power of having a top producing realtor who's doing two, three, four, 10 plus deals a month sending you all their pre-sold, pre-cooked, pre-tenderized buyers on a silver platter from a silver spoon. And you know that to be true. The thing is though, mortgage pros tend to use the, I don't like working with realtors as a way to protect their inner child because they don't like the feeling of being rejected. They don't like the feeling of, you know, having these realtors tow them around by the nose and for good reason, you know, some of these realtors, frankly, are just straight up annoying. They're prima donnas. They think their poop don't stink. They think they can walk on water. They're arrogant. They're apathetic. There's a lot of realtors that, frankly, you should not be working with. But frankly, that's the case with all human beings. There are friends you shouldn't be rolling with. There are family members that you shouldn't be rolling with, if at all possible. There are all a matter of human beings that don't jive with the dream you want to create and the energetic frequency you want to be transmitting because they are battery drainers. It's not just a hate on realtors. Let's get real. It's a human thing. Some human beings just should not be in your energy orbit because they're going to drain your battery, period. Right? So let's dive in, shall we? Let's talk about the five reasons why most mortgage pros hate realtors and how to fix it, how to be strategic so that you can get the best of working with realtors and leave the rest. So the first reason is that they have a weak value proposition. In some, case, in some cases, a non-existent value proposition. In other words, if you're just coming to realtors saying, I have great rates, great service, throw me a bone, that is not a value proposition. 
That's called minimum expectations just to be in business. I mean, that's not unique, certainly not compelling. They expect you to close deals on time with great service. That's what you're supposed to do as a mortgage professional. That's just par for the course. That's not unique, it's not compelling. And so having a non-existent or weak unique value proposition puts you in the category of the replaceable cog in the wheel, puts you in the ca category of being replaceable and dispensable. It puts you in a category of just being another loan leech, trying to leech them of loans. That is not going to get you the best partners and it's not going to get you the best experience when making overtures to get partners. And something tells me many of you, if not all of you, if you've been in the business more than a day, know that to, buy, to be true by virtue of experience, right? You know that experience intimately. So having a weak value proposition is the reason why you hate working with realtors because they're not giving the time of day, they're slopping you off, they're giving you lame excuses, smoke screens, just because they don't want to deal with another loan leech, another average Joe LO. It's like, seriously, don't waste my time. They're getting these overtures every single day, every single week. And if you don't have a kick-ass compelling reason why they should be giving you time and attention, well, of course, they're going to slough you off. Of course, they're going to give you all the lame excuses and the smoke screens. You know, I already have a lender. I'm fine. I'm not interested. You know, call me back later. You've heard all those lines before, right? The reason why they're saying that is the same knee-jerk knee reaction you're going to get when you go into a store and the clerk asks you, can I help you? What are you going to say? No, I'm just looking, right? Is that not what you say? That's what everyone says. Why? Because that's a knee-jerk reaction. It's a buyer defense mechanism. And human beings are built in with these buyer defense mechanisms. Realtors have them too. So if you don't have a kick-ass unique value proposition that puts you in a category of one. So while everyone else is trying to leech loans from them, you're bringing something of unique value that is refreshingly unique, refreshingly compelling, that's an easy yes, that's a no-brainer yes, then chances are you're gonna get rejected 99.9% .9 of the time and it's gonna be an absolute waste of time and fruitless toil. And many of you have experienced what that's like. Of course, you're not going to want to do that for more than a day. You're an intelligent human being. You want to have fruitful toil, not fruitless toil. So that's the first reason. The second reason why most mortgage pros hate working with realtors is because they're doing it the old school caveman method from the dark ages, doing cold calling, right? Cold calling the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday. That's doing it the hard way. It's the 21st freaking century. We got to start to use technology friends. There's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. There's no merit badges at the bank for doing it the hard way. And yet many so-called mortgage marketing coaches are touting this as the holy grail to success, cold calling the same 40 realtors every Monday without a kick-ass value proposition, without a compelling reason to even call them. And they wonder why they're not even picking up the phone anymore. They wonder why they're getting voicemail 98% of the time. Why? Because that's a symptom of doing it the hard way. There's technology nowadays, you might have noticed, that allows you to automate the process of making a compelling overture with the words that work if indeed you have them. And that's a big reason why Mortgage Pros hire us is to have those words that work with a battle-tested, proven system that allows them to just stick the key in the ignition and drive away and get straight to what works without messing around doing it the hard way. But there's technology that allows you to automate this process. So you just upload your list of real estate agents into the realtor traction system and bada bing, bada boom, the cream rises to the top with people who are hot for what you got, who are engaged, who are receptive, who are open. And then you just pick up the phone and start booking appointments like a hot knife through butter. I call that working smart as opposed to just working hard. I liken it to the difference between trying to dig the hole for the foundation for your skyscraper with a excavator versus a gardening trowel. Sure, they both get the job done, but one's a hell of a lot more work than the other. One's a hell of a lot more toil than the other. So again, I'm all about working smart, not just working hard. The other big reason why mortgage pros hate working with real estate agents or 
making overtures to attract them is because they are self-focused versus others focused. So in other words, if they hate working with realtors is because they're always in a very myopic focus towards what's not working. They'll look at it and they'll say, these realtors are not loyal. These realtors are a waste of time. They're arrogant. Uh, these realtors, you know, all they care about is themselves. These realtors make lofty promises and never deliver. Empty promises don't deliver. So notice it's a complaint around what they aren't getting that they think they're entitled to get. So they've got entitlement syndrome and they have this focus around that they should be getting something different than they're getting. So it's self-focused versus the gift I get to bring to the marketplace, the light I get to be in the darkness, the people I get to liberate out of the suck of working with a substandard lender into the radiant light of having a partner that brings business to them versus just leeching loans from them, who helps them close more deals with less effort, who helps them get more listings, get more buyers, close more deals with less effort versus just being an average Joe LO leeching loans and being a loan parasite. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Even if you're blind in one eye and you only have one eye to see in, you still have a massive unique advantage against everyone else who has no eye to see. So it doesn't take much to stand out when you have a focus on serving others, making a difference in someone else's life, being heart connected to purpose to make a difference in someone else's life. And when you come from that purpose driven place, now it's about being a conduit of contribution as opposed to getting from someone. Notice the difference energetically, trying to get someone to do something so you can get your outcome is why people hate salespeople. You know, that commission breath, sales halitosis comes from someone who's sleazy and slimy and is trying to get business versus serve, make a difference, to be able to liberate someone out of the suck of the problem and into the radiant light of a breakthrough, of a solution of getting out of the pain of the problem and into the solution that liberates them into a new level of breakthrough in their life, in their business. And so it's a very different paradigm, but that paradigm shift shifts everything energetically from coming to get to coming to give. From what can I get from you versus do you have what it takes to qualify for the gift I bring to the table. You're not gonna say that, but that's the mindset. Rejection is not, they rejected me, it's they rejected the opportunity. Rejected is not something that has me feel less qualified and less sufficient. Rejected means they just disqualified themselves from my gift. Notice the difference in the meaning. One meaning has me feeling defeated and depleted. The other meaning has me feel that I I'm only giving my gift to those who qualify. And what does that do? It has me feel empowered. And now I'm ready to bring my light into the darkness to be a difference maker, to be purpose-driven and mission-minded versus just a lone leech trying to get, get, get. So that's another big reason. So here's the third or rather fourth reason why most mortgage pros hate working with realtors. And that's because they're bringing their need instead of their seed. Right? If you bring your need to the marketplace instead of your seed, then you're, again, focused on who? Serving others? No, yourself. You're focusing on your bills. You're focusing on your goals. You're focusing on your targets, your quotas. You're focusing on how many loans you want to close and how many deals you want to do and how many units you want to get in your quiver. All that is great. There's nothing wrong with those outcomes. The problem is is it's bringing your need instead of your seed. So if you bring your need to the marketplace instead of your seed, you're going to have to get good at one of two things. And I learned this from the late and great Jim Rohn. You're either going to have to get really good at planting good seed in the spring or get really good at begging in the fall. Learn how to do one of those two because it's either one or the other. Either bring your quality seed and plant lots of quality seed in the spring or get good at, at making excuses 
and groveling for an existence in the fall. It's either one or the other. And so it's really about having a shift again in that paradigm, in that mindset to be a conduit of contribution versus just someone who's trying to close some more loans. And the fifth reason why mortgage pros tend to hate working with realtors is because they lack a proven plan. They lack a proven plan. They're heading east looking for the sunset. They're going to the gunfight with a butter knife, unequipped and ill-equipped. They're meandering in the wilderness, unarmed and naked, and they wonder why it ain't working. Well, if you don't have a proven plan, you're just throwing yoga to the fan, hoping something sticks. Now, hope is great if you're in prison, but it doesn't make for a very good marketing plan, does it? Right? Hope is great if you know you're hoping that you know you're going to be able to finally get out of the shackles. But if you truly want to live a life of liberty, abundance, prosperity, you can't rely on hope because hope ends up becoming a prison, hope prison. That's why we say here at Planet Prosper, we don't smoke the hope dope. We don't want you hoping, we want you knowing. That's why we don't smoke the hope dope because you've got to know that it's gonna work because it's a battle-tested proven plan, not hoping it's going to work. So if you're just throwing yoga to the fan hoping something sticks, yeah, that's a good reason to hope because it's just randomly making phone calls, hoping that someone with a pulse of could fog a mirror is going to pick up the phone and they say, yeah, I'll do business with you. But that is not a good strategy. That's just show up and throw up. That's just spraying and praying. I much prefer the sniper method where we target the right realtors. We already know how much production they're doing per year. We already know if they're actually referring to a preferred lender or they're just leaving that up to chance and happenstance, we have all that data up front. We know their profiles on social media. We do all the realtor recon in advance. You wanna win the war, you gotta do recon. You can't just randomly go out there and hope it's gonna pan out. You've got to be prepared. Most people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. So we know who we're targeting. And then we know the kick-ass super bait that's going to get the most receptive to respond. So we use the words that work. We use the right media to reach out to them in advance of calling them. And then we let that system pre-congregate those who are receptive. So we're only talking to people who are receptive. And then we use the words that work to overcome common objections because again, there will be objections, just like the buyer defense mechanism we talked about earlier. When you go into a store and they, the clerk says, can I help you? You say, no, I'm just looking. That's buyer defense mechanism and it's baked into your consciousness. It's a knee jerk reaction. So how do we dismantle those objections? You need to have words that work to dismantle those objections. Because if you buckle like cheap lawn furniture at the first sign of resistance, you're not gonna do well. If you buckle like cheap lawn furniture at the first sign of a no, or the first sign of you know, a buyer defense mechanism on 100% commission, you're gonna have skinny kids. It's not gonna go so well. You need to be able to turn those objections into opportunities to educate and opportunities to shine your light as a merchant of certainty. Because whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, they're listening for your certainty. They're listening for, does this person have the mojo, the confidence, the swagger factor, the light, the love, the compassion, the caring, the curiosity, the heart to deserve my time, to deserve my light, my, 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 my energy. Because at the end of the day, everyone's busy, right? Everyone's busy. You can always make more money, but you can't get your time back. These people are busy people, and as should you be busy. But busy doesn't necessarily mean productive. They want to be more productive. They want to be more fruitful. They want to be more fulfilled. They want to elevate their life in joy and happiness and abundance and freedom and fruitfulness. Can you and will you be that conduit of contribution that helps them be that and do that? So those objections are not objections. Those objections are a call to educate, a call to shine your light, shine it bright, and to 
give them a taste of what it looks like for someone to be a merchant of certainty. So the proven plan allows you to roll your shoulders back, take a deep breath in, put a relaxed smile on your face, put your freaking cape on and own your identity as a merchant of certainty. Why? Not out of arrogance, but out of confidence. Arrogance is saying, I know I'm good, but I don't know why I'm good. Confidence is saying, I know I'm good and I know I'm why I'm freaking good because I'm paying the price most people aren't going to pay so I can get the results most people aren't going to get. It's called doing the things most people won't do today so you can get the results most people aren't going to get tomorrow. That's where confidence comes from. So you have to have a proven plan to unleash that in you. Otherwise, you're just whistling in the wind, heading east, looking for the sunset. That ain't going to go so well. Doesn't matter how positive you are. If you're going to the gunfight with a butter knife, we got a freaking problem. So again, it's that battle plan that's mission critical to success. So if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're laying down. I feel you, brother. I really needed this. This makes a lot of sense. Why? I've been having some stinking thinking around realtors, why I've been resisting reaching out to realtors, why I've been holding it as a have to instead of a get to. It's making a lot of sense because a lot of those things you talked about, Doran, and those five reasons, I'm a culprit of. And I feel you. I've been there too. So welcome to the club. But if that's you and you're ready to transform your relationship with realtors, so instead of you chasing them, they're chasing you. If you're listening to this and you're ready to shift the energy so that Instead of you begging and bribing and chasing, you're attracting. Instead of you being interviewed by them, you're interviewing them. Instead of you feeling like you're groveling for business, now you're in the power position. Now you hold the cookie. Now they need you more than you need them. If you're ready to shift the paradigm and the dynamic in the equation 180 degrees so that you hold the cookie, you're in the driver's seat. They need you more than you need them. And you want to be able to do this in a way that's elegant, do this in a way that's simple, do this in a way that's empowering, where you maintain your dignity and you're able to feel empowered the whole way through the process. And you're defiantly committed by the word defiant. I mean, you're not just wanting to double or triple your income. You're defiantly committed to do so because you know you're capable of more and you're called to more and you don't want to settle for second best. And you want to build an ironclad, recession-proof, pur purchase-driven business where you're least and last affected by market downturns instead of first and most. If that's you and you're ready to take your business to the next level and increase your income by at least $100,000 and you're on an 80 basis points or higher comp plan as a residential mortgage professional, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business and we look at what's working, what's not working. Where are you at now? Where do you want to be? And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, I'll show you what that looks like. And if not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, my friends, our goal for you is that you leave this call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are you'll have a lot of fun as well. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book the call. You'll either get on my calendar or one of my team's calendar. We will come with a heart to serve, just an honest conversation, just have a chat on the phone, have a real talk conversation about what it's really going to take to help you create a breakthrough in your life and your business. So go ahead and do that if indeed you're defiantly committed to creating a breakthrough and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of settling for second best. You might be doing well, but good is always the mortal enemy of great. So you might be doing good. But that doesn't mean you have license to settle and be complacent and neglect and to drift and to sit on your laurels. No, good is always the mortal enemy of great. You know you're called to greatness, so we're not going to settle for good. We're going to climb to great. If that's you, book a call. We'll show you the pathway to greatness. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. So there you have it. I've just given you five reasons why most mortgage pros hate working with realtors and how to fix it at the root. Not poking around at the fruit on the outside, but going straight to the source, going to the root and transforming the dynamic of you being a groveling, chasing, prospecting, commission breath, halitosis, leeching loan officer to being a leader, being a true bona fide partner, being a difference maker, a conduit of contribution. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. I trust you got something from this that will ignite you and excite you to the next level. Now go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you're going to get massive results. 
Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace.